Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome back to the Networking Rx podcast. I appreciate you tuning in for another episode. I appreciate I appreciate you subscribing for all the episodes, past and present. Um, today, what I want to talk about are little things. I want to talk about the little things. We're all interested in the big things, but I want to talk about the little things. I recently did a facilitation program for a not-for-profit group that uh, I... Uh, I help put together and facilitate a, a monthly gathering of, of not-for-profits. And I also did a program within uh, Amspirit Business Connections on this, uh, one, of our, uh, one of our national calls. Um, and the title of the program is The Thin Edge of the Wedge. We, and this is, bear with me here, I, you know, a little bit, little bit of explanation. But I told the not-for-profit group simply this, is that no one ever gave a million dollars to a not-for-profit out of the gate. No one. It, 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 it never happened. Never happened where somebody just woke up one day and just opened up the phone book. I know we don't have phone books so much anymore. Went on the internet and just found one and gave them a million dollars. They don't. It doesn't operate like that. Likewise in business, no one ever just came out of the blue and gave somebody that great piece of business. You know, no individual just walks into a financial advisor and says, hey, here's my life savings, take it over. Here's my 401k, I'm just going to roll it over. I have no idea who you are, I just kind of pulled your name out of the phone book. We, those things don't happen. They don't happen at all. Likewise, people don't just, great relationships just don't, you know, just don't appear. They start somewhere, um, and we tend to lose track of that. We tend to, in our minds, we kind of daydream about these things we want, these people we want in our lives. And I assume I'm, you know, just like everybody else. Um, you know, we have big dreams. We want those big dreams dreams to happen. But the big dream doesn't just materialize. Yeah, I get it. People win the lottery, and that's just, you know, that's kind of the exception. It's a one in a, you know you're not going to get struck by lightning twice in a day sort of a thing. But people do get these wonderful things. There are not-for-profits that have people who give them a million dollars, millions of dollars. There are financial advisors who get these sorts of clients that are, you know, really kind of, well, makes their month, their week, their year. Uh, there are individuals who have built great businesses of have kind of realized their dreams or have wonderful relationships with people and they they happen so it's a question okay how do these things happen now the analogy I use uh, if if you're familiar with it there is a there's an ancient uh, monument southwest of London called Stonehenge it's Stonehenge not Stonehenge um, people, it's one of those things that gets pronounced, but it's Stonehenge, S-T-O-N-E-H-E-N-G-E. -E -E. um, now, Stonehenge, if you're not familiar with it, go ahead and look it up. Again, it's southwest of, of, of London, England, um, is a, a monument. And there's, there's lots to it, but the most notable part of it is... Are, are these rocks that are standing erect? And these aren't these are not small rocks. These are rocks that are uh, I, I don't know what they weigh. I'm not you know, I'm not the guy at the carnival who can kind of guess weight, but they are massive rocks. They are they are two ton rocks that are standing up straight, and some of them have rocks on top that are equally as big. And there's a lot of mystery that surrounds these rocks. Well, why did somebody build this? These, this monument they estimate to be about 5,000 years old. Um, that, that's what they estimate the, the age of it to be. And they're, they're not exactly sure why this was built. 
Um, and there's a lot of speculation and, and debate amongst scholars, and that's great. The other debate is, how are these built? Because you're thinking 5,000 years ago, um, there really was no machinery, um, and there really was no other sort of construction like this in that part of the world. Um, so how did they build these? How did they move these massive rocks? And then how did they stand them up? In, in a position that they pretty much haven't moved in, in 5,000 years. Um, and uh, you know, there's, there's certainly speculation on that as well. Uh, and again, follow me because this all leads back to it all leads back to networking. It all leads back to relationships. It always does um, because that's what this podcast is. But at any rate, uh, I stumbled across a a video on YouTube. I love video. You can learn. You can be entertained. Five minutes at a time. A couple minutes at a time. It's great. Uh, but I stumbled on a video of a guy who was sort of perplexed by this same thing. He's a uh, retired construction worker in Flint, Michigan. You can look it up. Um, and he was perplexed as well as well. How do you know? How does one build Stonehenge? How did how, how did this happen? And so he set about to recreate it. And his family, uh, he, what he did was he created these huge blocks of concrete, uh, as he says they you know weigh the you know weigh as much as a minivan. Uh, they are big blocks, every bit as big as you would see in Stonehenge. Um, and he demonstrates, and this is just him, this is not a bunch of people, this is just him, he demonstrates how you can move these things, how you can get these things standing erect. Now, mind you, this is not something that happens in 30 seconds. It's not a, it's, it's not a parlor trick. It takes him time to do this. Again, he is working just by himself doing these things, but he clearly demonstrates that it can be done. Um, and it's certainly using, you know, it's certainly using uh, levers and uh, levers, leverage. Um, you know, there are certain mechanical advantages out there that he takes it, you know, he makes use of. Um, and again, you have to watch the video and. And not that it's neither here nor there, but how he gets these things started is simply a wedge. When I'm talking about a wedge, a wooden wedge, think about something you use to prop open a door. That's a wedge. And the thin edge of the wedge is the small side of it. Um, and essentially, if you can get that wedge underneath that block and raise that block a sixteenth of an inch, a thirty-second of an inch. If you can just get the block a little bit off the ground, let's say a sixteenth of an inch, then you can get it an eighth of an inch off the ground, right? I mean, if you've gotten it a sixteenth, then it's not it's not uh, beyond the realm of possibility to get it an eighth of an inch off the ground. If you can get it an inch, then you can get it to a quarter, um, half, and then ultimately an inch. And if you can get it to an inch, then there's a means to certainly get it to two inches. Um, and then two inches can lead to a foot, um, and then a foot can lead to feet, um, multiple, multiple foots, um, you know, one foot, two foot, three foot, you know, so on and so forth until it's all the way upright. And he demonstrates this. It clearly can be done. It's him, his family. Uh, I don't know what his family thinks about him. They, on camera, they think he, they're proud of him. Um, if I were doing it, my kids would think I was nuts. Um, but it's it's all very interesting. And uh, he ultimately gets gets uh, gets the block upright. Now, again, this is a long process. It's just him, but it's a long process. But it can be done. And it starts with that thin little edge of the wedge. And that's what gets the whole thing moving. Now let's apply this to our networking situation. You know, no one ever gave a million dollars to a not-for-profit. No one ever just walked into a financial advisor and just dumped their life savings, dumped all their 401k money. Hey, I've never met you before, but here's bags of money. Doesn't happen. No one comes out of the woodwork and says, hey, I'm going to have a great relationship with you. 
those things don't happen. But people do give a million dollars to not-for-profits. People do give, uh, invest lots of money with financial advisors. Some financial advisors do really, really well. Um, and it just didn't come out of the ether. It was built. And a lot of these things, all of these things, really started with the thin edge of the wedge. Just, you know, doing that one thing out there. Now, in the exercise with the not-for-profits, with what I'll call the charitable roundtable, and something I haven't talked about on this program yet, and and, and I ought to. Um, but at any rate, let's save that for another day. You know, what I told them is, in, their, in our brainstorming sessions, is let's talk about what are the thin edges of the wedge to kind of get you started. And there were people who shared about how they got involved in the not-for-profits they got involved with, and when they started thinking back, they were like, you know what, it was the thin edge of the wedge. I was just invited out to hand out water bottles at some sort of an event. And that led me to a bigger role, and then a bigger role, and a bigger role. And they're like, hey, you're really, you know, you're a sharp person. Um, would you be willing to get on the board? You know, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and now they're immersed to the point that they're inviting other people in. And it all started with that one little thing, that one little thin edge of the wedge. So stop and think about what it is that you dream about, what it is you're trying to accomplish, um, and and stop just trying to make it happen. You know, I'm looking for, uh, you know, I don't, I don't mean to pick on financial advisors, um, but it's it's certainly easy for us to get our heads around. Uh, you know, you know, if you're a financial advisor. Um, and you're just starting out, stop trying to find the big money. Start with the thin edge of the wedge. Start with kind of that inroad where you can develop a relationship with somebody. Um, and I think back to you know my introduction to my advisor. When I, years ago, when I left where I was working, I didn't have a ton of money. But I had a decent amount of money that I'd accumulated in my professional life. Um, there was 401k money, and there was still had a pension, and I had money coming out of the pension, and I put it just in a, I just put it into a Schwab account. It was just a free Schwab account. Didn't would have a broker. Um, I was really getting no advice on it, which probably is not sound. But um, I ran into a broker in town he just out there just kind of he wasn't pitching me or anything just kind of introduced himself and we got to know each other um and it was that was the thin edge of the wedge where over time it's like you know what i know this guy i I like this guy i trust this guy you know what i need to have somebody be helping with me with this money my wife and i were married at this point need to have somebody um, and that was the impetus. But the thin edge of the wedge was just that first little introduction and just seeing how he was involved in the community. Um, and so that's what you need to think about with respect to whatever you use networking for. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to find a job and you need to get a job by the end of the week, it's, at that point, it's not really networking. It's more just brute force, just getting out there and trying to figure things out. Um but if you're looking to kind of build a big dream or b- build a big enterprise or, you know, continue to build your business, um, look for those little things. Look for those little things to get you started. That is, that's the thin edge of the wedge. And more often than not, those things will lead to bigger things. Um, you're not going to get the fat edge of the wedge uh, underneath the big block, metaphorically speaking. Um, it's just not the smart way to do it. It's just a lot of work. Um just something to think about. Uh, before we wrap up, I just want to remind you that we are looking for people to add to our stable of franchisees. This is a unique business opportunity in that our franchisees can continue to do what they're doing for a few hours in the morning, a couple mornings a week. They're working the Amspirit Business Connections program. The rest of the time, they are doing whatever they do, designing websites like Tom Anderson. Uh, being a merchant services consultant like Dean Curry, telecommunications consultant like Gina Winterstein, uh, coaches like Kayleen Marshall, uh, Matt Ward's a professional speaker, and they all kind of make these things work together. Um, if you're interested or you know somebody who's interested, even just to learn about it, 
uh, contact me using the email at the end of the program. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.